where I could get a proper procedure on it only because I could not get information on the cost of it. And to share the cost of it, one, one kind woman over there was talking about CPT codes, same identical CPT code, one being performed in a hospital, one being performed outpatient, the difference in cost was about $30,000. And it took me four months to even get that information. My doctors don't know what things cost. They, that's not their responsibility. What I have to do to go get cost is, quite frankly, amazing. My time's run out, but I'd like to say two things. We need to address some kind of uniformity of this information. And in addition to that, <clears throat> in this 12-year period of time, I've seen many things of lesser magnitude get serious study by the federal government. I would really like to see more in-depth work done with all the great information we now have available. Thank you. If I could ask the gentleman with the camera, if you could step aside so I could see the constituent. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, uh, I think you bring up a real good point and something that I hear from constituents a lot. They come in with their medical bills. They don't understand what's going on. That was one of the things with Medicare Part D. I, uh, I would be out uh, in the neighborhoods and I would watch people with four or five brochures trying to figure out what was covered, what was generic, what was going to click on, what was going to go out. There was no transparency in the system. And if you're going to be a consumer, um, and really be proactive like uh, you want to be and what uh, a lot of the discussion is about consumer-driven health care, then we have to provide you, um, insurance companies, um, our communities, our government, we have to provide you the transparency so that you can be making those decisions, much as the woman said that uh, she was doing with us picking out her own health care. That needs to be transparent. And um, that's one of the things that I think has really been lacking so far in this discussion, and that is how to have transparency with drug pricing and how to have transparency with what it's, it's costing you both in the doctor's office and at the hospital. So thank you for bringing that up, and I will be uh, continuing to fight for more transparency. Uh, 167, 269, and 123. Representative McCollum, I think uh, everything, most everything I'm reading, all people agree that reform needs to take place and that everybody should be covered. And you mentioned a time or two this evening the Republicans are just stonewalling everything. Well, I'm holding something here, which is from Senator Tom Coburn. And he summarizes his point that he's introduced the bill, along with several other senators, uh, for a choice for every American without raising taxes or increasing spending. In fact, one bill would save taxpayers at least $70 billion Many other members of Congress, both Republican and Democrats, are working on alternatives that will herd the American people away from a government-run program. Uh, I was very nervous before the congressional break because it looked to me, as this gentleman over on the other side, it looked like there was a tremendous ramrod taking place and that there was great disappointment on the part of the administration that, my gosh, the recess came and you left. I think that if you're committed to doing it right instead of quickly, there's a great deal of support for you across the nation. There is no support for me when it's doing quickly. So I hope myself, and I heard that from one or two other people this evening, that do it right. And we're behind you. We want it done. I want another point. Abortion hasn't been uh, mentioned this evening. And I would hope that you would vote against any 
reform plan that does not explicitly exclude abortions from the health care plan as far as taxpayers funding it. I, I beg you. All the discussion plans, both moving forward in the House and the Senate, would reflect what is current law in, uh, in Medicare. So that, 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 that has been the, the discussion point that is taken care of um, in, in both the caucuses, and that's just been where it's been at. And there's been a lot of misinformation, so thank you for bringing up what is a very delicate uh, talking point for many people. Thank you. Thank you. Congresswoman McCullough, thank you for doing this. Um, I appreciate that you brought uh, 4,000 uh, petitions from constituents. I don't know how many you have in your district, but I'm sure it's way more than 4,000. And I would like to see, um, and I would like you to talk about the people and the letters that you received against this public option also. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, you said on a few occasions that the Republicans were stonewalling and they want the status quo, but you have 60 votes in the Senate. If you want this public option, you could pass it. It's not just the Republicans that are stopping this. There are Democrats that do not like this public option either for a variety of different reasons. And one of them I will ask you in um, the bill of HR 3200, section 152, pages 50 and 51, it um, addresses, wait, I gotta put my glasses on. <laughs> okay. I would like to know about non-citizens, if they are covered, and who pays for their coverage. That is a section that addresses that. And if they are not covered, then why did the Democratic House and Energy Commons Committee vote against that amendment to prevent benefits to illegal aliens? Thank you. The discussion that is taking, uh, uh, moving forward is for citizens only. And sometimes, in politics, this will come as quite a shock to all of you. There'll be moments where people have a, what's called a gotcha moment. And so if it's current law, then only citizens are covered. If it's in the bill, then only citizens are covered. Somebody will throw an amendment down saying, gotcha. We're just going to just rub some salt in the moon and we're going to make a non-issue an issue here. You know what? Some of the Democrats said, enough. It's not in the bill. Only citizens are covered. It's clear as clear can be, and we're not, excuse me. Then why not put it in? It's already in the bill. Then what would be the harm? Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'm not, we're not going to get in an argument back and, back and forth, and I, and I know that that, that was not, not your goal. You just, you just wanted to make sure that, yeah, and I was. So it's not in the bill, and you offer an amendment in committee. Because this is what's been going on, saying only citizens are going to be covered. And you vote for it in committee. Now you voted on it twice. Then it goes to the rules committee. Then they want to offer it, you know, then they offer it again. Then it comes to the house floor. Enough already. Then pretty soon what happens is that there's um, 